The causes of breathlessness are complicated and the effects, as you will know, can be devastating. This short film aims to help you to understand what happens when you become breathless. Understanding your breathlessness may give you a start to regaining some control over it and reducing its severity. Breathing is controlled by an area of the brain called the brain stem respiratory complex. This area of the brain works a little bit like a thermostat, receiving messages from all parts of the body which tell this centre how active you are. For example, how much you are talking, whether you are laughing, whether you are moving around or eating. It then sends out signals to change the way you breathe in response to what your body needs. In some conditions, your lungs may be quite stiff. When you start to breathe, your brain is sent a message immediately, telling it that it's difficult to move air in and out of the lungs. There are a number of reasons that your breathing may become difficult, such as narrowing of the airways. These are the tubes that run between different areas of the lungs. Fluid build-up inside or outside the lungs or tumour pressing on the lungs or airways. When you breathe in air your lungs transfer oxygen to your body through the bloodstream. The lungs also remove a waste product, carbon dioxide, from the body when you breathe out. When your lungs are not working properly you can become breathless because there is a lack of oxygen or too much carbon dioxide in your body. The extra work of breathing sends a signal to the brain to say your breathing system is not working properly. A period of illness or weight loss can leave your breathing muscles a bit weak, making it harder to breathe. We know that the brain can sense and respond to the increased effort needed to get the air in and out of the body. Breathlessness has an effect on areas of the brain where you think, feel, remember and interpret experiences and things that have happened to you. And have you got any other questions? Or? Well, so by understanding what is making you frightened and anxious about your breathing, you can reduce the impact of breathlessness. For example, people often find it helpful to know that even though breathlessness is a horrible experience, breathlessness itself does not actually hurt you. Yeah, it's very, very common that, that people do less and less when they become more breathless. The problem with this is that you become less fit. And if you become less fit, then you'll become more breathless with, with less activity. We have this CD which... On we this website and in our information sheets, we talk quite a lot about psychological techniques such as relaxation, cognitive behavioural therapy and mindfulness. You can use these approaches to help reduce the impact of breathlessness on your life. On this website, you can see a short demonstration of how to use the fan. Learn breathing exercises and positions to help with recovery from breathlessness and try out a relaxation technique. You will also see some exercises which can be very helpful. Yes, and although we can't actually change the physical cause of the breathlessness, we can change how you feel and think about your breathlessness. And by using these methods, hopefully you'll feel that you've got a control over your breathlessness so that you'll be able to do more of the things that you want to do. Nice. When we are frightened, sad or depressed, there's a lower level than normal of some chemical messengers in our brain. That is why doctors sometimes prescribe tablets, such as antidepressants, to correct this. Our feelings about life are improved when the chemical balance is corrected. In the Breathlessness Intervention Service, we first use non-drug ways of improving levels of chemical messengers. Through techniques such as mindfulness and relaxation, you can change your feelings and responses to a frightening situation and help reduce the impact of breathlessness, 
even when the illness itself cannot be cured.